Today, we're going to be looking at paperguide.ai. It's an AI powered research site. It's got a number of different literature review tools, including a deep research function. It's got the ability to chat with PDFs, extract information from PDFs and do writing. So those are functions we've seen in a number of different AI powered research tools in the past. We're going to do a test of these functions today and see how this one compares. Got an affiliate link in the video description that will take you through to the site and fingers crossed we'll give you a little bit of a discount as well. Okay, so here we are on the site and we can see that it's a really nice, clean, simple interface. Everything's happening just here on the home screen. We've got tabs for AI search, deep research, literature review, chat and extract data. Where it says extract data, that's really an extension of chatting with a PDF. So it's where it will pull information out of a PDF. It's not data in a statistical or numeric sense. So let's start off. We'll start with the AI search. And in fact, we'll test these first three with the same research question. One that I've used different versions of before. And this way we can see the difference between each of the three. So we are going to whack in there. Does creatine enhance cognitive performance? So the running of that took maybe 30 seconds, probably less actually. And we can see that it's given us a nice summary. It's given us references all hyperlinked there. I really like with this one that it really zoomed in onto the randomized control trials and the meta analyses. So really going first for the best quality type of research for answering this question. And you can see just off that main AI search, it's given us something really substantial. So definitely much better than say just a chat GPT or a basic LLM where it's focused as we can see on proper references, not just pulling off websites and things like that. If we come back up to the top here, we can see that it's come taken it from the top 10 papers, but we've got a filter. And so we can adjust for publication year. We can adjust for has PDF. It's always nice with either has PDF or open access for us to go and be able to actually verify these sources. We've got a citations count. I normally wouldn't fill that in to start with. I might later on if I want to try and just get the highly cited sources. But normally I wouldn't start there. And we've also got the journal rating as well. If we pop that out and we can see that we've got options of either Q1, Q2 and up, Q3 and up, Q4 and up. And so we can adjust which journal articles are actually being referenced in terms of that particular quality metric. So that was pretty good. We won't play around with the filters, but we can see really nice detailed description. We've got each of the articles. You can see with the articles, we've got the ability to chat with them. So we can go and have a look. We can see that this one, we've got the PDF. It's open access. We can chat with it. We can cite it. We can add it to our references. So like saving it. And if we click on chat, we can see that it brings up the PDF. So we can read through the PDF. And then we've got the chat window over here on the other side. It's got some suggested things we could ask about the paper, but we can also just put in our own custom question as well. So if we just click on methodology and we can see that it's then saying what research methodology was used and paper guide comes back really nice and responsive. So nice quick response there and it gives us that information. So now let's go over to literature review. I'm going to jump to literature review, then come back to deep research. Deep research, I think is only on the paid tier. We can confirm that a little bit later. So let's see what happens when we go for literature review rather than AI search. Okay. So again, we get the analysis from the top 10 papers. We get a nice detailed description and with the summary again focusing on RCTs and meta-analyses which is really great to see. I can't quite recall we can see references in here again. It's broken it up a little bit differently to last time. Similar kinds of stuff though. Come down this time it gave us a table summary table as well which is really nice and with the literature review we get a little bit more in terms of this table. So this table, it's got the papers listed, it's got insights. We can then add columns. This is very much like SciSpace where we've got the ability to add more columns. Maybe we'll add methodology in there. 
and it will provide whatever that column measures for each of the papers. So I really love this. This is the kind of thing we've seen size space in particular, a couple of the others as well. And you can see a whole lot of different options there that we could add. Again, if we've got access to the PDF, we can chat with it. We can see the link to the PDF we can cite as well. Okay, now we're going to go with the deep research. So deep research is the much more recent option. It's available in ChatGPT previously only in the $200 tier, but recently they added just a handful. I think at the moment it is five per month or something along those lines. So you don't get a ton, but just even in the free version of ChatGPT, there's a couple. Gemini's got it, SciSpace and a couple of the other dedicated research AI platforms have started adding it in as well. So we can see here with all of the deep research, normally what happens is you will ask your question and then it will come back and it will ask for refining questions. So it really wants to make sure that's answering properly and with as much detail. So it's come back and it said, okay, what are the things we're most interested in? And so we can give the details relative to what it's asked as well as anything else to get a more focused research report so in there i've just put in the few details so we want to focus on long-term effects or cognitive domains and healthy adults sometimes i find that it'll come back and also which of these would you like and my answer is just all of it all of the above and so you can see again a little bit more clarifying so it had wanted clarification of adults and clarification of what long-term meant. And I just said that anything that is reasonable. And so we've got the option here of a controlled deep research, automated deep research, and we're going to click on automate. So as with other deep research with ChatGPT and the other different providers that have a deep research function, normally takes a few minutes so up here it says report generated in seven minutes didn't feel that long definitely it was a few minutes maybe seven was from the point i started answering those questions and we can see that we get a much much more detailed report i've got a button here research steps if we click that open then that's going to show us the path that it took so with the automated i couldn't find a detailed answer on the difference between the controlled and the automated I think just in terms of the way that it reviews and decides on which of these questions to look at. Automated does it itself. There's less prompting from you. But we can see there that there was five steps. It looked at these different questions. It then started to identify possible papers. And then it, once it had identified some of those papers, then it started looking at the relevance in terms of what we were after. It gave them screening scores to determine which were the best papers. And that's really one of the things. Some deep research is more explicit than others. I like that this one is actually pretty explicit in terms of telling us which ones it was included, including and screening scores, so how it ranked them. And then step five, it generated the report. We can see that the report is nicely referenced. All of the references are hyperlinked so we can go and look at all of the references and we can see it's a much much more detailed still somewhat bullet pointy but then that's to some degree the point i think that's a very conscious decision on their part that they've made it like that rather than some where they get really wordy and it's like they're writing an article for you but for me, this is great because it's communicating the relevant facts and it's not adding that extra fluff. So I actually like that. But that's going to be one of those things where, depending on what you're after. And so then we've got all of our references and not sure. I haven't spotted a way to be able to add more than 10 cited papers. So it's figuring out the best 10. I don't know if I've just missed that, but we can also open this up in the so here's their AI writer, and basically it's like a, not quite Word document, but not quite notepad, somewhere in between, where it lets us actually write. So we can actually type into this now ourselves, so we can both edit and add our own writing. 
We've still got an Ask AI in there, so it can help us with phrasing and things like that. We can see we can change from APA 7 to others. Grammar check, what a complete sentence, not so sure about that. But lets you do writing within the platform, which for some people might be handy, particularly if you're doing things like white papers, grey literature, where it's not quite as formal and the expectation around who it's written it and how it's been written is probably not quite the same as a journal article where certainly I think most researchers and most journals will still be expecting that the majority of the work has been done by the human rather than AI. So that's the writer. We briefly looked at that. Let's go back to the home page and let's have a go of chat with PDF. So the PDF that I've dropped in there is my PhD. I've done this with a number of the other AI tools and it's a pretty rigorous test. It's 250 pages and it's got tables, it's got graphs, it's got computer code, it's got writing. That's a sizable PDF with a lot of complexity and it's a good test because some sites just fall over and it's just too big. So far uploaded very quickly. We'll hit the proceed button. And we will see how well Paper Guide manages. Okay, so we've got it there in the PDF viewer. 249 pages, I guess I exaggerated by one. Let's have a chat with it. What was the research methodology? So it's been a few years. Let's have a look. So we combine sociological theory, statistical analysis, and simulation methods. That is exactly what I did. We looked at individual variable effects, weighted combinations. Yeah, yeah, that's mostly right. Micro-macro relationships, definitely. The methods include log linear models, logistic regression. That is definitely true. Simulation modeling. And then we've got the references. Okay, so that's pretty good. I like this. And a lot of sites haven't had this in the past. Notebook LM has been one that's been one of the more recent ones that's good with this, where we have these links and these links are view source links and they will take you to the bit in the PDF where it said the thing. So I like that. Let's see what the key findings were. Okay, so we've got our key findings, micro macro link. Yeah, I did write a little bit about the social theory of individual decisions. So the micro influencing what a society looks like, which is the macro in turn influencing what future individual decisions look like. So that was indeed part of what I wrote about. Age and education level were definitely things that impacted whether you had a partner of the same ethnicity as yourself. And there's a little bit about the models and the evolutionary algorithm for the simulation that I did. Funny looking back at this kind of more than 15 years ago now, some of this holds up. Some of this is probably you would do it a little bit differently with contemporary AI, but that's getting us a little bit distracted. What we were wanting to do was evaluate chatting with the PDF and it did a good job. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's have a go of this extract data. So in order to do this extract data, we need to select from my references. And so my references, even if we did a chat with PDF, like what I just did, that doesn't seem to store things exactly the same. So in my references, I needed to go into references and upload my file. You can upload a paper, you can search papers. So if they are publicly available online, you can just grab them from the URL. You don't need to grab the PDF and then upload it. And so we are going with the PDF of my PhD again. So we're not making it easy for it. Let's see how well it does. As I said earlier, extract data is basically pulling out the information that it's been doing in those literature review tables. So we will select and then we will start adding some columns and quite sure what happened with that insights column, but it certainly has done okay. So methodology we saw before. So some of this, it's re-retrieved, chat with PDF, we asked about methodology, it grabbed it, but this time it's doing it in the style of formatting in a table. And this is really good for if you've got a few PDFs and you want to be able to pull out some key information really quickly. We can see that from all of the different possibilities here, we'll try the TLDR as well. 
from all those possibilities there, that's the normal stuff you'd want to pull out. And we do have the ability to create a custom column from the looks of it as well. So I think if we click add column, then you can type in some instruction. So maybe you wanted to try and find sample sizes or sample design or something that's a little bit more specific to your research and you'd be able to do it. And so we can see the TLDR, yep, did a pretty good job. It's hyperlinked. If we click on that, then it actually gives you the source again. So that's something that I've really liked that it does a good job of being able to take you back to the source. So show you where it got the thing that it's saying. And that's something we don't get from a lot of other tools. So this has been paperguide.ai. Overall, I was pretty impressed. It did a good job of the searching literature review. The deep research was really nice. I think that's probably on the paid tier. Certainly even for mine, where I think I am on the pro version, uh, we do get a monthly limit, but 50 searches is an awful lot. Chat with P PDF and Extract Data did a great job. Yeah, definitely one worth considering. Make sure you use my affiliate link that's down in the video description. Otherwise, if you want to watch some more videos looking at some more different AI research tools, then I will post a link up for my AI playlist that's got a number of different tools that you can have a look at. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI.